This is Official Nerd Business. Hello, nerd boys and girls. Welcome back to Prime Mover. Uh, as said before, we are now starting to hit the, the more difficult puzzles, the one more fun to discuss. So let's let's get into it. Um, maximum and reorder were already discussed in my uh, first couple of videos that, that, that I uh, made on this channel. Uh, you can find them in the playlist in which this video is too. Um, so let's take a look at Negator. Negator, as the name kind of suggests, um, we need to make any positive numbers coming in on the A, uh, we need to make them negative. And if A happens to be a negative number already, we need to make them positive. So here's the machine. As said before, I am not going to um, build them in a, on live on the stream. I uh, already built something and I will walk you through it. Um, so here we can see a plus 2 um, and a minus 2 is expected as output, a minus 4 where a, a positive 4 is expected as output. And this is the machine I've built for it. So we have an uh, incoming number, um, every number waits until the previous number has been, uh, has been dealt with. Whatever output we get here also acts as a release to the lock here. Then the number um, is copied twice, uh, so we are left with three copies, which hit this uh, switch. Now, these are both identical, but with the positive and negatives uh, switched out, so I'm going to look at one of them. Um, if we have a, say, this positive two here, we enter this machine, where the first number goes down and the second and third number go up, until we have an output, and then the, uh, because this switch uh, keeps this in the up position once the first number got through and when when we get output uh, this switch gets flicked back down and a number comes through it gets flicked back up and it stays up until we have an output again and again uh, so first number goes down second number goes up here and into this machine and the third number goes here and waits until this machine has an output and then is released and this number is then destroyed. It's uh, it's just a uh, working copy. It, it, uh, all that this copy does is hit the switch here. So these two machines um, carry out our logic. These are both very similar. Oh, excuse me, I clicked out of the machine. Um, they get... Uh, two copies of the number, so a 2 comes in here and a 2 comes in here and what this does, these are two clocks and this clock just uh, keeps on subtracting a number until it hits 0 and that releases this number of which we are also subtracting something so uh, the 2 that comes in here and the 2 here uh, run in both in their clocks until they both are 0 when this comes 0 it uh, releases this number so is 0 is passed through to here and here and this number is then plugged into here there's some delay here to allow this number to come in and to have the clocks in sync and once again um, the third copy of the number is subtracted from the main number uh, thus once we start with 2 as our first copy we subtract the second 2 which makes it 0 and then we again subtract the third 2 which makes it negative 2 so that's what this uh, machine does. It's it's quite simple really, but the logistics were kind of fun to work out here, um, as well as in in the main uh, main setup here. And this machine is really identical, except we have pluses here instead of minus. So that's a negator. Let's see. It. If it works, so the two comes in, we create three copies, they get split off here and they go into here. The first copy goes down and the second and third copy run across the top. They enter their clocks here. Now this clock could be designed a bit faster. But we need to keep it in sync with this and since this has a... Um, and we're going to... Since this has a switch in it, um, this takes a couple of cycles so this speeding this up doesn't really bring us that much and here we have the negative 2 which comes out it switches this lock 
or this switch just gets toggled back into its starting position and it releases the next number. So minus four, three copies of this one, one goes down, two go up. Work. So there's the gator. Now it's not the fastest solution we've seen yet, but once again, we can always come back to optimize it. And there's lots of people that can do this a lot faster. So um, one of the things I like to do for optimizing is uh, looking up on the internet how other people did it. And then try and recreate that. Usually you will pick up some new tricks from looking at other people. Um, but for a first solution I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this worked out. So there's Negator. Let's have a look at Multiplicator. As I said before, this one is, uh, took me a while to, uh, to get this. And there are several parts of this puzzle that are pretty uh, complex, pretty intriguing. Uh, part of which are the logistics, and part of which is the simple logic. So multiplying a number, take the, the 2 and the 3 here. It's uh, adding number D to itself B times. So we... Um, we need to make that happen and to that end this machine has several components. First part is uh, this combined with this. Um, this is a clock that ticks down the, the 2 value and for every time it ticks down the 3 itself runs around in this machine and creates a copy of itself. So when the first part of our machine is done we have a stack of 3's too large. We can see that it happened if we start it. Pause it along the way a couple times to see how other parts of the machine work. So this creates one copy, which is put into this machine. In fact, this is a pretty intriguing machine here. Uh, and as you can see, the other um, three will also create a copy, then enter the loop. Um, It now switches this switch back, but the zero here will toggle this switch again, and this three will be destroyed. The zero is also put into this machine. Now this machine is quite interesting. This um, this takes a lot of the um, logistical power that we need to uh, calculate a multiple. Um, the first three we get becomes our um, our work in progress, if you will. So after um, this is now. It, uh, when it runs across this bus it also picks up um, whatever number we're trying to add to it, so another 3. Uh, so it comes back again being 6 and if we were uh, 3 times 3 or 4 or whatever then there would be several other 3 still in this bus. And it would pick up the next 3 and become 9, it would pick up the next 3 and become 12 etc. Now we only have two threes, so this 3, this 3, uh, the second 3 will come in here. And every second, third, fourth number that comes in keeps the switch in this position and there's the track here uh, whenever we are ready to add the next multiple uh, oh, yeah, the ne yeah, the next multiple um, we release this lock and which will happen now in fact so here's a second three and if you can see the, the zero it's also put into the machine what the zero does, I'll show in a second. Three comes in here and waits until the other three is available. And whatever comes next is held here. Here is a little bit of a delay that's placed on a separate board. All these um, grey, yellow, bluish boards, they're all delay boards. Um, and uh, this delay was necessary so that whatever number we already had calculated and whatever we are going to add to it, uh, leave this machine in that specific order. And there is no room here to do it on the board itself, so a little 
integrated circuit was needed to, uh, to add a little bit of delay. So that's the logistics. I'll show what Zero does, logistically speaking, in a second. And as you can imagine, if we had more multiples of three, then this line would be filled up further. Numbers could even be uh, stalled out here, but I don't believe that happens very often. Now the um, the numbers leave the board on the lower side, so here we have our first three and the second three is well underway. And they will enter the this machine. Well whatever number you currently have in progress is let up into the upper loop. And whatever we are going to add to it is let into the lower loop. Now this is a simple clock design where um, the what we are trying to add to our working progress is uh, subtracted until it hits zero. Uh, simultaneously one is added to our work in progress. Uh, unfortunately the clocks don't entirely match up so we get a plus one to many which is then um, shaved off again. So as you just saw a seven was running through here while we are expecting a six out of a um, three plus a three of course. Now the 6 goes back, our work in progress goes back and this track uh, it enters from the top. This track is designed so that the first number um, is our work in progress, it loops around this end and whatever comes back out of our uh, calculating machine is also put in here and runs along the same track and then releases whatever operation we have stored next usually and as I said before this, would, this could be filled up with 3's but we now have a 0 and the zero is kind of special when we release it uh, we just made a copy of it um, this zero will tell the machine that whatever work in progress you currently have is done so we need to, uh, the next number that comes in here will be a uh, what should we call it, a new work in progress, a new base number to which we will add things, so it needs to go up, this switch uh, makes that happen uh, and it also hits this switch where it will lead this not onto the track to the lower side but out sideways and the sideways track goes here and also releases the next number the other zero is put onto a delay track here and releases this number, we, we really just needed it for the release and it is then destroyed here I could have used this zero to push the switch here but they're really just equally fast so that doesn't really do anything 4 times 3, now there's a little more um, that's a little more complex, now you will see that the 3 starts stacking up here First three is released, our work in progress number. Three is released, that's our uh, what we're gonna add to it. So here are four threes stacked in this machine and a terminating zero. And here we have a machine that um, does the arithmetic. As said before, this adds one to many, so we shave off one again. This enters our work in progress track again, picks up the next number, is delayed ever so slightly. And we're doing arithmetic again. And the next number. I'm going to speed things up a little bit. now this machine is pretty full on with all the numbers but we're able to handle every test case that's generated here also because um, we can't um, we can't just add numbers together so in, in other um, programming puzzles I've done in the past it would have been uh, feasible to uh, sort the numbers that you get 
so that whatever number is highest is um, is your work in progress number and whatever number is lowest determines how many copies or how many steps you do in your machine so if you get an 8 times 2 then you would either have um, 8 separate um, additions of 2's or 2 additions of 8 so that would uh, mean a lot less operations in, in case uh, where you uh, sort it but because um, and I'm gonna this is this isn't all bad this is in fact is pretty good um, but here we break down every number we get so we always just add one to our end total so in an end total of um, uh, 27 means that we did 27 separate additions and for that operation it doesn't matter whether the the largest number went through this clock here and the smaller number got copied or vice versa which in other multiplication puzzles in, in programming like games uh, it would have mattered so that's that's an optimization that uh, sprang to mind but that doesn't really work on this machine well that's negator and multiplicator uh, said before I really enjoy the, the, the bit of the harder puzzles the, the, the puzzles that make you go wait a second I can't just do it with these components that I've got here. Um, next up we'll look at clamp and maybe sort at the same time and maybe as you can see I haven't solved this particular one yet but working on it. Um, maybe also take divide along. I'm not, I'm not sure I will we'll have to see how long it uh, takes us to walk through one of these machines because they're really getting quite a bit tougher than, uh, than what we've seen until now. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, and I will see you uh, next week for Clamp. Thanks for watching this video on Official Nerd Business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.